uh, but do go have a drink, use the restroom and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right into tonight's first story. Uh, our first performer you've seen right here on this very stage in Don't Close Your Eyes Live Radio Theater is Rose very recently in the production of Talking With. Everyone give it up for Sarah Suda with your... Woo! So from that, I should have learned, don't go on a crazy adventure. 
manager was someone you don't really know in a town you've never been to. But Voltaire was playing in Portland! <laughs> and he was going to do an all day show during the day and then a real show at night. And so I found a girl on MySpace and said, hey, do you want to go to Portland? And I met her in person a couple of times and she said, yeah, I have some family that lives way outside of Portland. We can stay with them. And I say, oh, I don't know, way outside of Portland? I have a friend we can stay with. Yes, my friend from Live Journal, <laughs> who I've never met, and haven't even talked to over the phone. We'll stay with him. And she said, sure. And so we drove to Portland, and we drove past Portland, because we had with us her baby. And so we drive way into the woods outside of Portland, and I don't really know where we're going, and hopefully she knows where we're going, and we get to the house, and it's fine. And we drop off her baby, and it's fine. And now it's pitch black, and we drive back to Portland, and we have chosen a well-lit area, and we meet this man from Live Journal, and we were very lucky. He is who he says he is, <laughs> and his apartment has two couches with, that he has put blankets on and there are pillows and it is fine. And the next day, I put on my outfit with the see-through petticoat and the stripy tights and the seven-inch heels and we see the show and it's great. The all-ages show during the day, it's super fun and we get everything signed and it's so fun and then they are both under 21. And so I go to the regular show at a bar in downtown Portland alone and I am very lucky. And it's great, and it's fun, and so much fun, and I drive home alone afterwards, and it's fine. That summer, I got to go to Italy for a school project. I was going to film an entomologist looking for a beetle. <laughs> I can do! And so this was my first time out of the country by myself, and so I tried to do a lot of research, and a lot of the research that I did said, you probably don't want to stand out. You might want to buy a fake wedding ring. You should really think about that. And so I buy a lot of plain colored t-shirts and bring only blue jeans and brown hiking boots. And I go to Italy with about 70 pounds of MSU's film equipment. And the first few days are great. I'm there with the entomologist. We're digging in the dirt, looking for bugs and filming stuff, etc. And then the entomologist and his staff they need to go to Southeast Asia to finish their collecting trip. Well, I need to go to Verona to film some other bugs at a museum. And so I need to get from the, where the hotel is, to Rome, to Bologna, to Verona, all on the trains, with all of the film equipment, all by myself. And so I get on the train near the hotel, and I get to Rome, and I sit next to an older man from British Columbia, and he is very nice. And he tells me how easy it is to use the trains, it's totally fine. He helps me get a porter when I get to the train station in Rome, and I get on the train to go to Bologna. And it's fine, easy, totally easy. And then I get off the train in Bologna, and I have no idea what I'm doing. There are numbers on the ticket, and there are numbers on the train, and I have no idea which numbers or what numbers on anything. And well, I've gotten off the train way far at the end of the platform, and the televisions that have the timetables are on the way other end of the platform, and I have 70 pounds of MSU film equipment, and none of it has wheels. <laughs> and so I got the ticket. And there's a policeman not too far away. And so I run up to him and I speak absolutely no Italian. And I say, uh, I don't know if this is my train. And he looks at the ticket and he looks at me and he looks at the ticket and he says, no, and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. So the train is going to leave. I don't know if that's my train. I don't know if the next train is my train. I don't really know what to do. And so I'm standing there, unsure what to do, and there is an open door of the train sitting there, and there are about six or seven 20 something year old Italian men who are looking at me going. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Verona? <laughs> <laughs> 
And they say, see! <laughs> and so they get all my film equipment and they bring it onto the train. And I'm on the train with these people. And one of them is much more interested in me than the rest of them. Eventually all the rest of them sort of recede into other areas of the train and I'm there with just this one man and he won't stop touching me. And he insists on sitting very, very close. And he won't let me sit in a seat. We're sitting in the aisle, sort of near the floor and the door, and he won't stop <coughs> touching me. And he keeps saying, oh, you should come with me to a party later, or maybe I should go back to your hotel room with you. And I don't speak any Italian, and his English is not very much, and I am searching through my phrase book, trying to find the words to say, please don't touch me. And we're sitting there, and the ticker taker comes by, and I'm not on the right train. He is going to Verona, but he is taking a trip that stops in another town and then catches another train. And so I have to pay an extra 11 euros, and I'm already running out of money, but he has this weird fight with the ticket taker, and I don't know what it's about because I don't speak any Italian. And I'm sitting there in my plain colored shirt and blue jeans and hiking boots thinking, this is how I'll die. <laughs> and I'm going to lose all the medicine. <laughs> so I'm there, and I don't know what to do, and we get to the next stop, and I am very lucky. We get off the train, and there is a young Italian couple that speaks very good English, and they seem to know this man, and they know him in a very oh, that guy kind of a way. <laughs> and so, even though he insists on holding my hand and trying to kiss my neck during the next train ride, when we get to the station, they help me get to the taxi. And the taxi takes me to the hotel, and I haven't lost any equipment, and it's fine. <laughs> and I was very lucky. So if you make a resolution this year, dress however the hell you want. <laughs> but be smart, because you might not always be lucky. <laughs> <laughs>